Matthew chapter number 7. We'll begin reading verse number 13. The Bible says, Enter ye, didn't say enter the one next to you or behind you or in front of you, enter ye in at the straight gate. Why? Here's why. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Beware false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We are so grateful for everything we've enjoyed thus far in the house of God. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. What a message. Lord, our hearts were challenged and convicted to love the Bible more. God, we're thankful for the Bible. A lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Lord, we're thankful for the wonderful truths and precious promises contained therein. Uh, it is our lifeline to heaven, and God, we're thankful for it. Uh, God, we're thankful, Lord, for the good singing, the good choir singing, good congregational singing, and then the good special singing. Uh, Lord, what a blessing uh, 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 to enjoy the good singing. And Lord, our hearts were blessed by it. God, we're thankful for the good testimonies, and Lord, how they spoke to our hearts, and Lord, as you have blessed and moved in the hearts of your people, uh, done work in their lives, and they t stood and gave you glory for it. And Father, we're thankful for that. Uh, and God, again, we're thankful for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, Lord, there are portions of this country uh, that doesn't even have a page of it uh, in their house or in their hands. Uh, and there's places throughout the world that uh, doesn't have the Word of God. Uh, and God, here we are, so blessed to be, have it, be able to read it. We're thankful for it. Uh, now, Father, I pray you take the truths of thy words, uh, and God, take the thought you're born in my heart. Uh, and I pray you'd speak to hearts today. Uh, I pray nobody would tune us out. Uh, I pray that you'd arrest their attention. Uh, we do pray for a hedge about this place. Uh, I know that the devil and every imp of hell uh, will do everything they can uh, uh, to discourage and disrupt the service. Uh, God, I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. Uh, and I pray that God, uh, for the next few minutes, uh, uh, folks wouldn't see a man standing and spitting and slobbering, uh, but they'd hear from heaven. Uh, they'd hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and God, I pray uh, for those in our attendance uh, that may not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, Today, uh, you'd remove the blinders that Satan's put over their eyes. Uh, today, you'd convict their hearts. Uh, today, through cords of love, you'd draw them to an altar of repentance uh, that, God, we'd see them born again, uh, saved, uh, their names written down in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, God, I pray for that child of God that's here, uh, but they're here in body, uh, and with their lips they do honor you, uh, but their heart is far from you. Uh, uh, today, I pray they too uh, would find an altar of repentance, uh, and revival would take place in their heart and in their life. Uh, God, I fear, uh, just coming out of a 10-day meeting around here, uh, there are some that weren't revived, uh, and some that revival's already gone. Uh, God, I pray today there'd be a reckoning with 
the Holy Ghost of God uh, and the Word of God would convict them uh, and God you do something in their hearts. Uh, God use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, we'll thank you for it uh, for it's in the holy uh, and wonderful uh, and in the name that Brother Jimmy was so clear to bring out in Sunday school. Uh, the name that's above every name. Uh, the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want to draw your attention to this passage. Uh, the Lord Jesus has just uh, uh, closed out uh, the greatest sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and uh, as he's closing it out, uh, he li gives us some insight uh, uh, to some things that are false. Uh, he deals with falseness, Brother James. Uh, can I say, first of all, uh, he deals with the false path. Uh, look again in verse 13. Uh, he said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, uh, for wide is the gate, uh, and broad is the way uh, that leadeth to destruction, uh, and many there be which go in thereat. Uh, uh, friend, uh, as you sit here today, uh, you have to make a choice. Uh, you have to decide which path you're on. Uh, uh, if you're here today uh, and you're lost without God, uh, uh, you don't have to worry about being on that wide path. You're already there. Uh, and let me help you something. Uh, I've read the back of the book. Uh, and Revelation chapter number 20, uh, verse 15 uh, says all those on that wide path, uh, that false path, uh, that path that's broad, uh, that path that is wide, uh, that path that leads to destruction. Uh, a friend, uh, in Revelation chapter number 20, uh, verse 15, uh, it said all those on that wide path whose names are not found written in the book of life uh, shall be thrown off into the lake of fire uh, and you'll spend eternity uh, burning in the flames of fire. Uh, paying for your sins uh, because you wouldn't choose the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior uh, and enter the straight gate, uh, enter that narrow path, uh, that path which is a holy path, uh, that path which is a righteous path, uh, that path that leads to glory. Uh, it's a narrow path, friend. Uh, and the Bible says there be few that find it. Uh, said how narrow is it? It's about that narrow right there. Because every page of the Bible points to Jesus Christ and He is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now you can sit here tonight, today uh, and you can look churchy and you can sound churchy uh, and you can think all you want to about uh, well these days I'll turn over a new leaf uh, well these days I'll try out Jesus uh, but I remind you the Bible says today's the day of salvation uh, uh, friend this might be your last opportunity to choose uh, the straight way the Lord Jesus Christ best life you ever live it changed your life for all time and eternity. He deals with a false path. He also deals with false prophets in verse 15. He says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I don't know if this will be a revelation to you or not, but I want you to know that not everybody that opens a Bible not everybody that stands behind a pulpit, uh, not everybody that has a TV program uh, uh, for evangelism uh, is called of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, there are many false prophets today. Uh, uh, a clear way to determine if somebody's a false prophet or not is if they're using the right Bible. Uh, uh, the one we heard taught about in Sunday school. Uh, uh, the one that God wrote. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's only one Bible. Uh, uh, there's a lot of false versions. Uh, but there's one Bible that that God wrote uh, and a false prophet does not use the word of God uh, but can I say there are some who do and they just change it a little bit like Satan did when he talked to Eve mm -mm. but a false prophet will never point you to Jesus he'll always point you to himself he warns of false prophets he war warns of a false path but then he warns of a false profession Look at verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He said, Preacher, I pray all the time. That don't mean you're going to heaven. Preacher, I, I, I talk to the Lord all the time. Don't mean you're going to heaven. Preacher, I, I called on the Lord 
and, and prayed to him and I got to, that don't mean you're going to heaven not unless you've done the will of his father see notwithstanding it's God's will that none should perish but that all should come to repentance hmm you say, well, I believe in Jesus. Well, the Bible says the devils believe and they fear and tremble. It's not enough to believe in Jesus. Hmm? You've got to believe on Him. You've got to quit trusting in anything that you can offer and put all your trust and faith in Him and then turn from your direction and turn to Him. It's called repentance. It's got to be a change of mind and a change of heart. There's a lot of people who have a head knowledge of Jesus. But that heart has never turned to Jesus. Can I say, false professions often seek legitimacy. You've got to prove you're saved. And they do so through a works-based salvation. Hmm. Well, I know I'm saved because I've done this. Wrong. It's not contingent on what you've done. It's contingent on what he done in the finished works of Calvary. When he died on the cross for your sins and he shed his blood for your sins, uh, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures, friends. Uh, 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 when you put your faith and trust in only your merit, all in him, that's the only way you'll get saved, friend. Preacher, I've been baptized, so. Preacher, I, I, I'm a member of the church, so. There's a lot of folks sitting in here today tell you they were a member of the church and baptized, too, and realize they's lost. Hmm? But see, they have a works-based salvation. And, and notice, if you will, in verse 22, we're going to find how their works are personified. Notice their works are personified in sanctimony. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Haven't we preached and done things in your name? Haven't we prophesied? By, by prophesying, what, what they're talking about is telling the future. Well, there are no prophets anymore. Uh, there are some that call themselves prophets, note them, false prophet. There are some that call themselves apostles, note them, false. The last one was John, and he died. There's no apostolic gifts. Um, but they'll say, did we not prophesy? You know what the Bible gave us the mark of a true prophet of God? Everything he said came to pass. Hmm. Uh but he said, didn't we prophesy in your name? There's a lot of folks claiming to have a gift to prophesy and tell you all kinds of things are going to happen. You know what they're doing? They're trying to get your pocketbook. That's what they're doing. It's sanctimony. It's falseness. It's not based upon the will or word of God. There's a lot of that going on today. It's not only their sanctimony, the way they worship, always brings gratification to the flesh. Hmm. This modern push of dimming the lights and having strobe lights and neon lights and having smoke machines uh, and having a, 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 a rock band uh, uh, to get your uh, uh, emotions moving and your feet are moving uh, and to have some display of emotion uh, uh, where folks are washing windows or whatever they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, 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 none of that entertainment and emotion and all that stuff is not of God uh, when it comes to worship. Now listen, there are some emotions when you worship. But we're to worship in spirit and in truth. When God gets to move and the Word of God comes alive in your life and in your heart and the preacher gets to preaching and the singers get to preaching, sometimes your worship's a form of a tear running down your face. Uh, sometimes it's a hearty amen, hallelujah. Uh, sometimes you jump up. Uh, sometimes you're just grinning from ear to ear. Uh, hey, worship will bring an expression in your life. But your expression isn't your worship. It's a byproduct of what God's done in your heart. They deal with sanctimony. They deal with spiritualism. Their works-based salvation. They're always talking about the devil. Notice what he said. Mm, have, and in thy name have cast out devils. Mm. I listen to the same things people say and I cringe. The Bible tells us that Michael the archangel didn't durst accusation against the devil. He said, the Lord rebuke thee. There are a lot of people who talk to the devil. They say, devil, get out of here. Devil, I rebuke thee. Devil this, devil this. I don't want to talk to the devil. 
I'm no match for the devil in my flesh. I talk to the Lord. Matter of fact, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to talk to the devil, but it does tell us to call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, he'll show us great mighty things that we know it's not. Uh, are you listening? Uh, uh, a lot of people sing about the devil. Uh, 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 devil, get behind me. I'm not messing with the devil, friends. Uh, that's a battle I'm not equipped for. Uh, I'll just jump in the lap of Jesus. Let him handle the devil. Uh, hey, when the devil gets them uh, uh, trying to tempt me or move on me, uh, I'll just turn Turn to the Lord. Uh, I'll resist the devil. He'll flee from me. Uh, doesn't tell me to rebuke the devil. Uh, tells me to resist him, my dear friends. Uh, but you listen to this charismatic, crazematic crowd. They're all the time talking about the devil. I don't. I, I don't want. I, that's that's out of my. That's out of my pay grade right there. Dealing with the devil. Uh, I've known men that lost their mind because they studied on how they can fight the devil. Mm. where the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God and we can withstand the wiles of the devil I'll just stick with what the Bible says mm. their works are personified in sanctimony and spiritualism but also societal niceties they're always doing something good for society look what it says and in thy name done many wonderful works I remember a few years ago we was in a drought and it was hot it was in July. I mean, it was hitting 100 every day. And the vineyard up here next door, they were sitting out there handing out water to folks driving down the road. Well, that's a nice thing to do. Ain't going to get you to heaven. Uh, so preachers shouldn't call out people. Jesus did. Paul did. That's my crowd, Jesus and Paul. Uh, Listen, you go up here to VFW Hall, they'll have some kind of thing to help society. You go over uh, 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 to every false church, they always got something they're doing for society. Uh, uh, when there's a hurricane or a tornado, they'll ship uh, containers of things down to help people. I'm all for helping people. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm all for it. We help a lot of folks around here. Uh, but listen, uh, we don't help people to merit favor from God to get to heaven. Uh, we help people because God in His favor shine on us. Uh, and we know we're going to heaven, my dear friends. I see this falseness he deals with. And can I say, if Jesus dealt with falseness 2,000 years ago, how much more falseness is in the world today? And I want to preach with God's help because he said many would come to him that day. And then he goes on to say, Depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. And I see today a Christianity with no Christ. And I want to preach on a Christless Christianity. Can I say, I'd like to throw off on all the charismatics, and I'd like to throw off on all the folks that came out from Rome but now they've uh, uh, under the Reformation but now they've lined back up with Rome and I'd like to deal with a lot of things like that today but I'm seeing it in Baptist churches all across the country folks sitting there depending on what they've done thinking they're going to heaven let me give you some things that identify a Christless Christianity in a Christless Christianity, there is no preponderance. That's a fancy word for authority. They embrace an invisible, universal church. Or if you say you're saved, we're all part of the same body. Well, that's not what the Bible, Bible, 115 times in the New Testament, 112 of those 115 times where the word church is mentioned, it's talking about a local, visitable body of baptized believers there's no such thing as an invisible church they embrace this invisible universal everybody's a part of church ecumenical whatever you want to call it they, they embrace a false narrative about God you listen to a lot of this contemporary Christian music I don't know how many times I've preached over that Jordan over the years you probably remember you, you never forget nothing but I'd say it's in the hundreds I've mentioned all this uh, praise and worship, contemporary Christian music, uh, 
And friends, uh, if you haven't seen that uh, documentary uh, 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 on Discovery Plus about this Hillsong outfit uh, and how they uh, purposely write that music to stir your mute motions to make you think you're worshiping uh, and all it is uh, is for you to get sucked into their system uh, and for you to buy their music uh, and to buy their uh, 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 stuff they put out uh, and to be, get, get your money and be a part of that. Uh, they've even said in their services at a certain time they'll drop the temperature way down uh, uh, so you uh, 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 get cold and you think it's the Holy Ghost uh, and it's just them manipulating you. Uh, all that that area is uh, and by the way it's not only contemporary Christian music uh, this southern gospel music movement uh, uh, where they don't belong to a local church uh, where they don't uh, tie to a local church uh, where they don't go out and knock on doors and invite folks to Christ uh, hey uh, all this crowd's about making money uh, glorifying themselves uh, and they're doing it in the name of Jesus uh, if you let your children be indoctrinated by yours that stuff uh, shame on you uh, don't come crying to me in about 15 years uh, when their mind's messed up uh, and they want to run and join a recovery movement because uh, they was treated so unfairly by Bible believers. Uh, uh, friends, uh, you ought to sow the Word of God in your children's heart. Uh, give them songs that praise the Lord Jesus Christ that are biblical uh, and hey, get them to enjoy the goodness of God. But they got a false narrative of God. You listen to that contemporary junk. They'll mention God. They don't mention Jesus. I remind you that AAA or AA or whatever it is and BVD and everybody else, they'll tell you it's okay to have a God and you can make anything a God. And America has a God it's called the almighty dollar but that's not Jesus Christ and if you notice in our text they came to Jesus because they're going to stand before him at the great white throne judgment and he's going to tell them depart from me ye that worked iniquity they embrace a false narrative about God and they embrace an altered godless Bible Don't said God only pinned down one if you come here, you know, you know what it is. Can I tell this? I never like to embarrass people, but I do it all the time anyway. God bless Miss Kathy over here. It's good to see you. Appreciate you, sis. It's good. I'm not going to embarrass you too bad. Who better way? I appreciate you, sis. Miss Kathy was a lifelong Catholic. Brother Mike invited her to church when he was doing some work on her house. And she asked one question, as far as I know. She asked, do you all wear masks? It was during the pandemic. He said, well, I guess he wasn't ready for that question. Huh? And he said, well, no, but you can if you want to. She said, good. It was up there at St. Tim or wherever she was going. He was making them wear masks. So she came. Second time she came, she, she approached Miss Annette. She said, I don't think I've got the right Bible. We gave her a Bible. She just kept coming. You know what she found out? She found out she needed Jesus. And she put her faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And here she sits, serving Jesus. What a blessing. Uh, you don't have to tell people they got the wrong Bible when you start using the right one. The Holy Ghost tell them real quick. See, they have no authority. Everything is based on man and man's precepts and man's concepts. And today, I'm not here on my own authority can I help you with something Christ is the head of the church he founded it on his earthly ministry he commissioned it he empowered it on the day of Pentecost uh, and he directs it today from the right hand of the throne of God he's the head of the church but he's more than that he's also to be Lord of our lives mm. There's a lot of folks, Brother Tommy, I'm afraid they know Jesus as Savior. They don't know Him as Lord. That's why I don't read their Bible. That's why I don't come to church faithfully. That's why I don't get to church on time. That's why they miss Sunday school. Because Jesus isn't your Lord. Let me just help you something. Because it'll get rough. So we might as well just go ahead and start it out. Can I go ahead and start it out, Red? All right, I'm going to. Listen, Brother Josh challenge you read the gospels 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Find one time when synagogue or the Sabbath day is mentioned that Jesus wasn't in the house of God. Find me one time when you find synagogue or you find the Sabbath day that Jesus wasn't there. Now, if he was there, where to be there? But just in case you're confused on that, he even had the writer of Hebrews pinned down, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? His coming. So when you choose to lay out of church, you got sin in your life because you're going against what Jesus said. And my dear friends, you're missing out on what God has for you. It might be you miss church because you don't have Christ in your Christianity. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I lay out of church all the time that Jesus lets me lay out. He just don't let me lay out. Uh, he's the head of the church, and he's to be Lord of your life. Can I say, the church is his government on, our, on, on earth, and it's to be our refuge, as Brother Ron testified to. The church, we ought to run to it. We ought to long for it. Uh, uh, it ought to be in our hearts all the time. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, and we're to love the church because he lives within us. Uh, and it ought to be the greatest part of our life. It's an oasis in this old desert of life that we live in. It's a refuge where we find hope and help. Thank God for the church. I love the church. I'm a local church man. Mm -mm. Now, I go this far to say anything bypasses local church, it's wrong. I don't care what it is. And I made people mad. I was on Billy Graham Avenue and, and get, made people mad preaching down in North Carolina. But the bottom line is uh, Billy Graham bypassed the local church. Uh, his crusades weren't of God. Uh, uh, and that's why he stood up and said that all them people he saw come uh, forward, uh, uh, maybe 2% really trusted in Christ. Uh, that's a pretty bad outlook on it. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, I, I, can, I can give this uh, uh, very authoritative uh, all that ever came to Jesus got in. Are you listening? Uh, he said if any come to him he no wise cast them out. Uh, a lot of people came to Billy Graham. Uh, few came to Jesus. Uh, why? Because he had no authority. Uh, by the way, he wasn't even a Baptist. He was a Presbyterian. Uh, but he knew that he could get in that Southern Baptist movement. He'd get their money and that's what he did. You're welcome. There's a book out, 673 pages, called Billy Graham and His Friends. Uh, uh, you buy that book, get that book, it'll help you, it'll enlighten you. Billy Graham, he said there was no, hell, uh, no fire in hell. Jesus said there was. Billy Graham bowed down and kissed the Pope's ring. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, ain't no hope in the Pope. Uh, matter of fact, no, I won't say that. Well... Might as well be on dope as to trust in the Pope. Mm. It's Tyler's fault. Can I say, our authority is not only Christ, He's our head. The church is not only uh, His government. Listen, I, I don't have time. I, you go read the Baptist distinctive that I did on, but He had 12, 12 uh, tribes of Israel. Showing the 12 in the Old Testament. He had the 12 apostles for the New Testament. 12 is always his number of government. And the church is his government. Yep. Can I say this? The canon of Scripture is our authority. And it's to be our lifeline to heaven. We speak to God in prayer. He speaks to us through his word. Thank God we have his authority. But a Christless Christianity doesn't have any authority, any preponderance. Can I say this? A Christless Christianity doesn't have any power. Oh, it's got a spirit, but it doesn't have any power. That's why John told us, try the spirits, whether they be of God. But it doesn't have any power. Can I say a Christless Christianity has no power to convert a sinner? That's why they tell everybody, come as you are. They have no power to change them. Hmm? The beauty of what we've seen this week, 
is we seem dirty, rotten, low down, sorry, no good sinners. Many of them are addicted to things that you and I don't even know about. Uh, and a lot of them live lifestyles we don't even fathom. Uh, a, a lot of them come out of jails and prisons. Uh, they had already robbed everything from all their family, had no place to go, uh, end up down there, heard about Jesus. Uh, hey, uh, put their faith and trust in Jesus. Repent of their sins. Jesus changed their lives. Uh, hey, you wouldn't look at them like you used to look at them. Uh, they're dress right, they walk right, they talk right. Uh, why? Because they met the master. That madman of Gadara, they tried everything in the world to change that guy. They even chained him to the tombs and he broke the chains. Uh, 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 he had many demons possessing him. Uh, but can I say, uh, one encounter with Jesus. Uh, they found that man clothed and in his right mind. Uh, hey, he's a different fellow. Why? Because of the power that God has. Christless Christianity has no power to convert a sinner. That's why this crowd here is crying, Lord, Lord, we did everything right. There's only one problem. You didn't put your faith in the Lord. No power to convert a sinner. There's no power of connection to God. You see, serving God has a reverence to it, but it's more than that. There's a relationship in it. I have received the adoption of sonship. I am a joint heir to the throne of God. Now that blows my mind why God would even look at me as a sorry, no good sinner that I was. Let alone save me, you know, go to Calvary and die for me and save me. But then after he saved me, he said, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you everything I got. That blows my mind. But there is a relationship. My three children are here. They know that anything I have except the keys to my car in the garage, they are welcome to. Huh? I noticed it had more miles on it than it should have had when you put it back in the garage the other day. I noticed that. But it didn't have any cobwebs in them. It must have got blown out somewhere along the line. Huh? Uh, my children don't even have to ask. Because everything we have is theirs. I got news for you. I don't have to ask God to feed me every day. I don't have to ask Him to clothe me every day. I don't have to ask Him to bless me every day. I don't have. You know what I find myself, Brother Ray, doing? I find myself asking Him to help you and help others. I, I don't even have time to. Have, you know what? He He just blesses me and blesses me and blesses me. And Miss Brittany, everything that He has is mine. Sometimes he just gives it to me one cheeseburger at a time, but it's all mine. Huh? I'm thankful for the power of the connection I have to Christ. He lives in me. And then, can I say, a Christless Christianity, they don't have any power, no power to change a soul. Let me give you some scripture. I want you to listen to this. Because I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. And then you, some of you aren't going to like it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, did say if any man knew of Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God doesn't leave you the same way he found you. He changes you. Say, how does he do it? I don't know. He's just got the power to do it. Brother Phil, your testimony is before you got saved, you was a foul mouth, tobacco chewing, cussing, sorry, no good rascal. And now you're in the house of God, singing praise unto God, shouting the victory to God. How'd that happen? He met Jesus. That's how it happened. And Jesus will change you. Huh? I was just in the company of guys that used to be drunks, used to be dope addicts. Uh, I was fellowshipping with them, talking with them. Uh, they was telling me how God delivered them from that stuff. Uh, hey, they didn't have to do a step process. Uh, they didn't have to take a drug to get them off of drugs. Uh, uh, they put their faith in Jesus, uh, and He changed their never-ending soul. Uh, it's an amazing thing. His power... To change your soul. 1 Corinthians 6 says this, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. These are folks you're going to hell with, by the way, if you don't know Jesus. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate. That's, that's the biblical word for 
queer, LBGTA, homosexual. Say, Brother Doug, you shouldn't be so blunt. Faggots, that's what it's all dealing with right there. Amen. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But it didn't stop there. By the way, that's what we all were in some form or fashion. But I'm glad for verse number 11 it said, And such were, past tense, some of you. But ye are, present tense, washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, and by the Spirit of our God. Uh, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, he had a power to change us. Uh, we're not what we used to be. Uh, we may not always be what we should be. Uh, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Uh, and hang on, neighbor. Uh, when I get that body fastened like his, uh, why do you see what I shall be? Uh, I shall be like him. Uh, for I'll see him as he is. Hallelujah. A Christless Christian has no power. That's why somebody will make a profession, get baptized, and go right back to the same nasty life that they were in before. Uh, and we can make excuses for whatever reason. The bottom line is they didn't give their heart to Jesus. Because He don't leave you in that mess. He delivers you from that mess. Uh, can I say? Christless Christianity... Doesn't have any preponderance, no authority. Doesn't have any power. Some of you look like you're about to faint. I'm not even done yet. It doesn't have any peace. Them girls just got up here and sang about a peace that Jesus gives. Hmm. There is a peace. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Philippians tells us it's a peace beyond peace, beyond understanding. Peace that passeth all understanding. I have been amazed in my 48 years of being saved. I've seen people face some of the most tragic things, but they never are overtaken by it. I've seen cancer come into their lives only to see them Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I pick on Miss Crystal a lot. But when she got that cancer, she'd take chemo on Wednesdays and didn't miss, miss church on Wednesday night. She didn't miss service, I know of. She had cancer, but cancer didn't have her because she belonged to Christ. And she had a peace. Now, there's a whole lot more goes behind that because not only did she have cancer, but her husband left her with three youngins. Yeah. And she don't know what the future holds. And she don't know how these youngins are going to make it through. But she knew one thing. Jesus was in control. Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? Say, so how'd that happen, peace? And she's not the only one. Miss Mary had cancer. Huh? Others had cancer. Miss Brandy had cancer. I've seen folks over the years face harsh times but they had a peace and I'm sure there were days she thought I'll just stay at the house but then she got to thinking but Jesus has been so good to me I think I'll just go on down to the church house huh amazes me how little it takes some people to knock them out of the house of God I was just in Washington D.C. Two weeks ago, I guess. I don't remember. They're all over the place. And a lot of you know Preacher Wheeler, good man of God. And I got to look around. There were some that weren't there. I mean, of course, I hadn't been there in a decade. So, And so I asked him, where's so-and-so? Where's so-and-so? We went out to lunch, and he said, COVID knocked them out. No, hold on. That's happened everywhere. Folks, a while. Let me do it right. I don't want to get sick. Well, you don't read because doing this, you're breathing your own carbon monoxide, and you ended up getting sick. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Well, I don't want to get around people. I might get germs. Well, you got enough germs in your house to kill you if God wants to kill you. All right. I just trust in the Lord. 
But that's not why. See, where they were, five minutes from Washington, D.C., and the wicked governor they had, about as wicked as the one we had, they were faced with every time they assembled a $2,000 fine, and he was faced with a year in jail. And he got in his prayer clauses, got to hold the horns of the altar, and God said, stay open. Three times the police were called on him. Three times the police showed up, and I kind of feel like after he told me the story, it's kind of like some of our deputies showed up, said, well, we got a call, we had to come out. Good to see you, have a good day. Turned around and walked off. But he had people got to infighting. What do you think we ought to do? He said, well, the pastor said we're staying open. No, I don't want to know what he says. What do you think we ought to do? What do you think we ought to do? What do you? And the ones that didn't want to do what the pastor wanted to do decided to leave. It amazes me how we can trust Jesus to take us to heaven, but we can't trust him to take care of us. And it amazes me, Brother Tyler, they won't come to church, but they'll go to Walmart. If I'm going to die, I want to die from church and not Walmart. Uh, I've never had too much church to kill me. Preacher, you're just being mean. No, I'm telling you, i got a peace that the Lord's in control. The Christless Christianity has no peace. That's why good churchgoers told everybody that we were mean and we wanted to kill people by spreading germs well you know who spread the germs Fauci, CNN you're welcome a Christless Christianity has no proof you know the greatest proof that Christ is Lord is just look at all the lives he's changed You can look at those that you once knew was the worst one in town, and now they're faithful sitting on a church pew every week. What happened? Jesus. You can see the proof. Hmm? Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You know how some of you know you don't have Christ? There's no spirit in you. Bears witness with the Word of God. Hmm? You're hoping. Hope won't get you there. I have a no-so salvation. These things I've written that you may know. I know that my I passed from death unto life, and my name's written down in heaven. Say, so how do you know that, preacher? Because I was there when it happened. Amen. Romans fifteen thirteen says, Then the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me read that again. That's a lot of a lot in that verse. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. You know why you're always negative and don't have any joy? You might have a Christless Christianity. He fills you with joy. Matter of fact, he wrote joy unspeakable and full glory. He gives you joy. Now, not every day is a joyful day, but every day I'm saved. And every day I can rejoice in the fact I'm saved. Huh? Joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Not negative fear-mongering, but hope. Through the power of of the Holy Ghost. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. When's the last time somebody come to ask you how you tick? How come you're so joyful? How come you always got a good spirit? How come nothing seems to affect you? What makes you different? Well, they don't ask me that. You might have a Christless Christianity. He said, you're always giving an answer of the hope that is in you. Because men are going to come and ask you about it. Boy, it got real quiet right there. Uh, now listen. I'm going to meddle. So I don't like it when you meddle. We'll get your own church. You won't have any authority and you'll line up right with what I'm preaching. Now, if you can't get back to church tonight, 
you might not have Christ in your Christianity. Now, I know there are some who are providentially hindered. I know there are some people that have to work. They didn't sign up to work, they have to work. And I know there are some people who really are sick. I promise you one thing, if Miss May could be here, she'd be here this morning. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And she can't be here. I understand, God understands that. But I'm not talking about being providentially hindered. I'm not talking about even having the sniffles. I'm talking about some of you don't come back to church because you don't want to come back to church. Why don't you want to come back to church? You might not have any Christ in your Christianity. Hmm? Hey, if you can't give your tithe. Ooh, got real quiet there. And by the way, I looked in the bulletin and last week looks like a whole bunch of you didn't give a tithe. I want to tell you something. If he gets your heart, he'll get your pocketbook. And by the way, if you're just tithing, you're still out of the will of God because you're going to give an offering over your tithe. Boy, they don't like it when you get on money, so I'll just stay there. If he doesn't get your tithe, there might not be any Christ in your Christianity. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I hit and miss. Does he hit and miss with you? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad he's faithful. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. I wonder if, if he started treating us like we treat him. What if he just cut off our oxygen for all the times we don't pray? We wouldn't be alive long, would we? Hmm? Hmm. If you don't pray, if you don't get in the Bible, you might not have any Christ in your Christianity. Hmm? We're commanded to pray. We're commanded to study the Word of God. Hmm? At, at best, you're a sinner. You need to get right with God. Hmm? Oh, it's getting real quiet. I ain't even done meddling. Well, if the tide didn't put them out, Brother Tyler, this one will. Here, give me that thing you got in your vest pocket. No, not that. I don't, I don't need to blow my nose. Where's, where's that thing? If you can't put this down, Hey, I know there's some good going to use to this. But most of the time you don't use it for good. If you can play games, you can read your Bible. If you can be nosy on Facebook looking at everybody's life, you can read your Bible. Get in here and get nosy about, about fellows like Isaac and Elijah and Elisha. Read about their lives. That'll help you. Uh, uh. If you can search the internet, you can search the scriptures. Again, I know there, I, Google's my friend too. I know every time I'm in, a, in a, one of these cities I'm in, Google, find me a pizza, you know? I understand that. But I don't live on Google. But I can't live without this. If you can live without it, and you can't live without your phone, you might not have Christ in your Christianity. Peter, you're meddling. I know, and I'm having a good time. Hey, if you can't do anything around the church, unless you get a pat on the back or get noticed for it. See, those things done in secret, it's what he rewards openly. Yeah? If you're one of these, you got one of them things just going around like this all the time. Might not have any Christ in your Christianity. Hmm. Uh, hey, if you can tell somebody, if you can't tell somebody about Jesus, but you can talk about cars and guns and your teams, and you can talk about you know shopping sales, and you can talk about places to dine, and you can talk about you know everything in the world, puppies and rainbows and kitty cats, but you can't tell somebody about Jesus. You might not have any Jesus in your Christianity. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you can't give, uh, if you can't have godly aspirations, but all your aspirations are fleshly, you plan your year based on your vacation and everything, and everything you do is all based on worldly stuff. But your aspirations, and I'm going to read the Bible more, I'm going to pray more, I'm going to get more involved in church. 
I'm going, I'm going to, here's a, here'd be a good one. Miss Noreen, I haven't picked on you all day. Let me pick on you. This would be a good thing. Don't you think this would be a good thing? Each week, make a new friend in church. Hmm? Pick out somebody that you don't know very well and say, hey, I want to know about you. Huh? I want to know about Miss Crystal. Miss Crystal, where do you work? Oh, you work over at the cable company. It's always time calling me and trying to get me to switch and get my money. Oh, well, what a blessing. Huh? I appreciate you, Miss. And, and your daughter's name's Izzy, and we got Havana, and you're married to, what's his name? Oh, Camille, huh? Listen, stand up, Camille. Just stand up. Stand up. This guy's a blessing to me. You know what? This, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm going to. He didn't ask me to do this. You know what he called me yesterday? He was upset because he had a burden, and he went to Target, and as people was coming in Target, he's asking them if they want to know about the Lord, giving them tracks. And Target came out and ran him off, told him if he didn't leave, he was calling the cops. Well, he didn't want to go to jail. So he called me and says, can they do that? I said, well, technically, you can sit back down. I've seen enough of you. Technically, we, we aren't soliciting when we're giving out tracts because we're not asking for anything. The Supreme Court's already ruled that. But if they've got it posted, no soliciting, they can't call the cops. All the cops are going to do is come tell you to stop and leave. That's what they're going to do. Huh? They just threaten you. Because they need Christ. That's what they really need. And if any outfit needs Christ, it's Target. But anyway. But I said that not to tell you what he was doing. Do you know what he does for a living? And we saw him. He doesn't look like much. He's a day trader. Yeah, him. That guy right there is a day trader. You know why you didn't know that? Because you had made a friend out of him. Hmm? That blew my mind. He started talking about all this Bitcoin stuff. And everything. That's way beyond my brain. He's talking about all this stuff and everything. I'm thinking, under God, good meal. He's a day trader. What a blessing. I don't know any other Baptist pastor can go around and say, I got a day trader in my church. <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, why don't you make a friend out of somebody? Why don't you get to know somebody? Go up to somebody and say, hey, my name's Doug, and I'd just like to get to know you better. You want to go out and have a coffee or something? Uh, Jesus said, this is how the world know you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. Not love for just a few you got to know over the years. Just learn people. You'd be amazed at where God's brought people from and how God moves in their life, how God's done a great work in their life. It'll bless the socks off of you. But see, all your aspirations are around going to the beach or something. Get involved in these kids' lives. We got a bulletin board back here when they got ball games and stuff. Go on a Saturday morning and watch two or three of them play. It means a world to them, and it'll bless you too. I don't have time for that. Well, you might not have time for Christ either. You might not be in your Christianity. Hmm? If you can't worship, worship is a verb. That means it's an action word. Sitting on the promises isn't the same as standing on the promises. Coming and sitting on a pew is not worship. Worship is embracing the truths of the Scriptures and identifying the greatness and grace of God for you to do so and then heeding to what God says in the sanctuary and out of the sanctuary. Worship comes from the heart. Every day of my life, I tell my wife I love her at least once, usually more than that. She don't force me to tell her I love her. She don't have to remind me to tell me tell me to tell her that I love her. She don't have to leave me sticky notes. Don't forget to tell me you love me. I love her. And for 33 years, she's been my bride. And she cares for me in ways nobody else will. And I love her. But I got news for you. For 48 years, he changed my life. When I was unlovable, he loved me. And there are days I'm still unlovable. He still loves me. More than I even fathom what love is. 
And if, if I can certainly tell her every day I love her, why can't I tell him every day I love her? Amen. When I come to the house of God and singers get to singing something about him and it strikes a chord in my heart, I'm not afraid to stand up and say, glory. <laughs> that's, that's him. That's one I love. But if you can't worship, might not be any Christ in your Christianity. And I don't mean to be ugly or unkind. There's some of you in here been coming for years. I've never seen you worship. Now, not everybody's going to act like Phil. But don't get me wrong, I could take a hundred more just like him. Huh? Not everybody's going to act. Worship isn't about acting like somebody else. Worship is about expressing devotion to him. And if you can't worship in here, I know you're not worshiping out there. And there's some of you for years, I've never seen you worship. I've never seen you broken in an altar. I've never see, seen you stand up and testify with the brokenness and blessings of God on your life. Oh, Some of you, I've heard you say words, but there's no power behind it. we already seen what a Christless Christianity has. No power. There's some of you, I've never seen you worship. Say, well, that's just not my nature. Wrong. Remember? 2 Corinthians 5.17, you're a new creature. That old Adam, Adam nature, yeah, it don't want to worship. But if you feed that inward man enough, he puts that Adam nature and he, he worships. Well, you're about to die, so I'll give you the last point. A Christless Christianity has no promise. I've been told that Crossroads turns over their congregation every seven to nine months because what they offer doesn't keep them because it has no promise you can only wash windows so long your arms get tired you can only go out and make a point to go to their services and not get any change or any help for so long John 14, we got promise. Verse number 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. We believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know why folks got so excited when Tyler was singing about Beulah Land? Because they're going. Hmm? Acts 1.10 says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them, white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go up into heaven. He's a coming. He promised he would. And the angels confirmed it and said, He's a coming back the same way he went. He's a coming. We have promise. We have a promise for our daily life. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. That's, that's why I struggle with folks that can't get through. He's never left us. A preacher, I feel all alone. You might have a Christless Christianity. <coughs> I've got hope and promise. Preacher, don't you get discouraged every day of my life. You don't see the text messages I get from folks while they can't come to church. Hmm? I didn't have gray hair, high blood pressure, or sugar problems until I started pastoring. I have to eat sugar to just keep going, keep my mind off of everything. No, I get discouraged. Preacher, do you ever get stressed out all the time? Preacher, do you ever have a bad day more than I'd like to admit? Preacher, are there days you don't feel like reading your Bible? Absolutely. That's why I enjoyed the Sunday school lesson this morning. Preacher, are there days that you don't pray like you should? Uh, yep, too many. But I still press on. Because I have a promise. And I have promise in my life. And his name is Jesus. And my greatest fear is that I have preached to folks and they have a Christless Christianity. And they're going to be there in Matthew 7 at the great white throne judgment after being in this church, not some church down the road, this church, and hear the preaching that's been done behind this pulpit.
and die and go to hell. Friend, you don't have to go to hell. But I sure would do inventory. Paul told us that we should examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. Can you go back to a place where truly Jesus changed your life when you called on him, you repented, and he saved you, and he changed your life? If you can't go back to a place, friend, you just might have a Christless Christianity. If you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, Friend, I don't know what world you're look, living in, but if you look around, you can see this world's messed up. And I'm going to tell you why, because Jesus told us all this stuff would happen. Read, read 2 Timothy chapter 3. Perilous times shall come. The last days, perilous times shall come. We're there. And then he gives a whole list of things that would be going on. They're going on. It's happening. I believe uh, whoever's going to blow the trumpet, if it's Gabriel or whoever, they're wetting their lips. I believe the Lord's about ready to step out on the clouds and call his church out of here. And friend, if you don't trust in Christ and that happens, there's no hope for you. You'll be at the lake of fire. You'll say, I went to church. I knew Brother Doug. I heard preaching. I didn't. Depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. My simple question is, I don't care about your Christianity. I don't care about your baptism. I don't care about your church membership. I don't care about how much money you give. My question is, do you know Jesus? Does he know you? If you don't know him, I get in this altar today. If you do know him, but you've been living far beneath the standards the Bible says that we ought to live as Christians, I get in this altar today and get right with God. If you're here today and you don't know how to be saved, if you just come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible. We'll show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You can go out here, a new creature in Christ, and your world will be better today and for all of eternity. But Jesus has done all that he, he will do. He died for you, was buried, rose again, proved he was a son of God. He established his church, friend, allowed you to be here, allowed you to hear this message. He's put people in your life to let you know they love you and that you need to be saved, but it's all on you now, friend. Will you put your faith in Jesus? Christian, if living for Christ is so difficult you can't do it, you might not have Christ. You say, well, you've got so many rules. No, being a Christian, we're, we have liberty. I'm no longer bound by sin, and it's a joy to serve the Master. If you trust Him, it'll be a joy for you too. Why don't you come today? Do you know Jesus? Preacher, I know I'm saved. Well, if you're not living right, why don't you get right? Because there's people watching your life. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, you come. Miss Tina, you come. Get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. I'm glad for true Christianity. I'm glad for the day you saved my life. But Lord, I look around and see people trusting in a lot of things that won't save them. Lord, there may be some people here today that have a Christless Christianity. Lord, I know there is, or you wouldn't give me this message. I'd have gladly sat down and egged on Brother Jimmy as he was preaching. But Lord, there's somebody here not saved, and there's folks here that claim they're Christians and they don't have Christ. So I pray the sweet Holy Ghost would convict them of their sin. I pray you'd remove the blinders that sorry no good devils blinded their minds with. God, I pray they'd come to reality of the fact they're headed to hell. But they don't have to go. They'll come put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, have your way in this invitation. Help your people to live in far beneath the privileges of a Christian. Come and do business with God. And God be glorified in it all. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.